Hey, so, so far my Opel Ampera was a very reliable car. However, from a few days I started having some troubles. So the long story short, whenever it's very rainy or there is a lot of humidity, uh, my car started to refuse starting the petrol engine. Uh, it would tell me, it would, it would show me actually on the indicator that I have some fuel, like I don't know, three quarters, one quarter or whatever. Uh, but it would also show me the notification that the fuel level is very low and it would stop uh, the engine, uh, would switch back to electricity and would say, would give me the notification that it reduced the power of the engine. I was trying to resolve that problem. Uh, I, I browsed through several forums and spoke to some people. So the, the most common diagnosis was that it's probably something wrong with fuel gauge. Uh, so yes, because this problem was disappearing. When I, I would put my car into, uh, into dry garage, then after a night in the dry garage, it would, uh, it would disappear. Uh, or at the very beginning, the, the second, uh, second way to get rid of this problem would be just to top up the fuel tank. Uh, I would top up because it started uh, happening when I had, I don't know, one quarter of the tank. I would top up it, top up it to full and then it would disappear and would appear again, I don't know, when, whenever the heavy rains come. So the diagnosis was it's most likely something with the wires coming from the tank to the computer. Uh, I had this problem a few times. Uh, I, y yesterday I had the same problem. It was after the rain. So I went uh, under the car to check the wires. It looked okay. I used some special cleaning stuff for, for sockets. Uh, played with it a bit and well, it worked again. So I thought this was the problem. Maybe the, the sockets were a bit rusty or whatever. However, today I had another trip, 150 kilometers. Uh, and when I wanted to switch to petrol, fortunately I had like 20 kilometers on the battery left. I switched to the petrol engine and again the same problem. So it would show me that I have almost full tank but at the same time I would get the notification that the fuel level is very low, uh, it would reduce the power and uh, it wouldn't start the power generator. So I, first of all, I just deleted all of the errors uh, through OBD uh, interface, but it didn't help. Then I went under the car just to disconnect this uh, <clears throat> this fuel gauge, but it didn't help as well. I was still getting these errors. So what I did, I went to petrol station just to top up the, because I had about 20 kilometers range left on the battery. So I went to the gas station. I filled up uh, the tank mm, and then uh, the indicator worked. I thought it, it's going to be fine. However, another problem appeared. So although I have about 20 kilometers range left, uh, I used only 6.2 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. Uh, and usually I can use up to 8.7, let's say. So approximately two and a half kilowatt hours are left in the battery. The car shows that there is no battery at all, that it's empty. If I switch here, it also shows that the battery is empty. It would give me the notification that there is a problem with the engine and that the power was reduced. 
so I did fortunately the the petrol engine was working I did almost 100 kilometers on it uh, but it would it wouldn't use battery at all it was using just the generator it reduced the power uh, as you can see the consumption was quite high 6.2 liters for 100 kilometers and I was driving very slow uh, I was like 90 kilometers all the time mm, and the recuperation also wouldn't work uh, and there are some errors uh, in the OBD2 interface oh and just a side note in here so I have found that there is one more problem uh, and it includes most of us so we just forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm seriously doing such videos takes a lot of effort from my side and all I ask in the return is just to gently tap this button to turn it blue, not too much, not too little. YouTube will be happy, I will be happy and you will have more content like this. After quite a lot of research, my guess was it must be more just than one issue. I have found few people with similar problems on different forums. The most of the suggestions was to replace the 12 volt battery. I was quite skeptical about this because as you can see my battery has been replaced just 12 months ago however the number of errors that I was getting was quite suspicious so that I decided just to go to the service and check my battery the results were quite surprising so at the rest my battery had 12.3 volts and under the load it was only 9.7 volts. For a regular car it would be just okay, but Ampera is quite demanding when it comes to the 12 volt battery. The second problem was popping up engine check control on my dashboard. When I was checking the error it was telling me something wrong with, with the catalyst. At the very beginning I would just delete that error and everything would be fine. Every now and then the error would come back, I would delete it and so on. But recently, after deleting that error, I would get uh, another error on the dashboard. The car would switch to an emergency mode. So it wouldn't use any of the battery and it wouldn't use the recuperation. The diagnosis for that was not that easy. But again, I just browsed through my Opel history of the service and I have found that the last time when ignition sparks have been changed was over 120,000 kilometers ago. The ignition coils were never changed before. It just popped the red light in my head because according to service manual, you should change it every 160,000 kilometers. Having those guesses, I just decided to call Opel Service, one of the few that actually uh, fix Opel Amperas, uh, just to ask about the quote for changing the sparks, changing the coils and 12 volt battery. The quote was very surprising for me. They wanted over 3000 Polish water for just those three replacements. So they asked only for the removing the OBD error, 299 Zwote. For ignition sparks, it was 360 Zwote. Ignition coil would be 1400 Zwote. And for the 12 volt battery, they asked 990 Zwote. All of those prices would include the labor. So the grand total would be at least 3049 Zwote. But my biggest disappointment was when I asked to have an appointment to fix those things. So they said they cannot give me the date because they don't have all of the parts and they, have, they are having some troubles to getting these parts from central warehouse in the Germany. So they said it might be a week, two weeks or even a month. Unfortunately, the service is about 300 kilometers from my city. So I gave up 
And at this point, I was already sure I have to do it myself. So I browsed through the internet to get all of these parts. In the description below, you can find some links to Amazon store where you can have those parts for your replacements if you need them. So let me share the prices of the parts that I have paid for. So I bought the battery for 580 Polish Zwoty. It was Banner AGM 60 ampere hours battery. This is quite important to buy AGM battery. Then the ignition coil was only about 370 Zwoty and ignition sparks were about 95 Zwoty. So the grand total was 1045 Zwoty, which is one third of what they asked. The battery replacement process was quite straightforward. I haven't recorded it. There are only four screws that you have to unscrew to take off the boot cover and few locks on the battery. Easy job, 20 minutes of work and it's done. Replacing coils and sparks was not that difficult either. First, you need to take off the cover. In order to do it, you need to unscrew two screws and loose those two air hoses. Next, unscrew two more screws from the coil, pull it up and unplug the wires. Unplugging the wires is a bit tricky. You have to push that black plastic and pull the orange one at the same time. After that, we need to remove the sparks. I highly recommend you to invest in decent key to remove the sparks, as I didn't have good one and I was fighting quite a bit. To catch the sparks after they are unscrewed, I used old coil. As you can see, the sparks were not in the best condition, neither was the coil. After that, just put new sparks, screw them, connect new coil and push it in its place. Put all of the screws and place the cover on its place. The whole process took me only about 30 minutes and most of the time I was just fighting with the sparks to get them out. Even somebody with almost zero experience with mechanics just like me was able to do it so anybody could do it. So after those replacements I have done already 1000 kilometers and none of those errors appeared again. So fingers crossed, those problems will not come back. And that's it for today, thanks for watching. As always, remember to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and just leave some comment to boost the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and see you next time.